to today's session of um, TEDx Port Harcourt Community Curation. We have Dr. Mina Obanga with us today and Donald Okudu, who is the primary licensee for TEDx Port Harcourt. Last week's session, we discussed the monopoly of violence. The previous week was property spectrum, and the week before was farming and food security. Today, we have an interesting topic that bothers us today, our world, and we've titled it Post-Pandemic Climate Action. Yes. Um, before we go further to introduce our speaker, Dr. Mina Obanga, um, Donald Okudo, our primary licensee, um, I'll have him tell us about this year's TEDx event. Okay, so this marks our eighth edition of TEDx Portacot, and our theme for this year is the light bearer. And the light bearer is the exploration of hope and despair, especially in times of crisis like we are right now in this pandemic. Um, most interestingly, we're also one of the four TEDx events selected globally to go into a partnership with TED and School Foundation as part of their TEDx School Conversation, which is supposed to drive conversations on the grassroots level as to how the pandemic has affected our communities. And we are going to be having um, a series of conversations built on that. Um, the TEDx community, um, community curation also, it's a pre-event conversation to our main event in December, on the 5th of December. This is also an opportunity for us to build more context around the theme, flesh it out a lot more. Uh, just so that on the day of the main event, we can make a lot more sense around the conversations that we're going to be having on that day. Okay, thank you. Um, so, Dr. Mina Obanga, we are privileged to have you here thank you. on this stage. She is a Ford Foundation Fellow, um, a multi-award winning development activist. She's an academic, PhD. See, and a whole lot more. Um, in gender, social work, and development studies. She's also the founder for the founder of <laughs> <laughs> the Center for Development Support Initiative, which turned 23 20. days ago. <laughs> 20 years of promoting community and environmental rights across last count 800 communities 800, oh. 800 communities fantastic that's a whole lot of work that i've been doing for 20 years mm -hmm. coupled with every other thing mm. that she's been doing community and environmental rights um today talking about um, before we jump into the topic i would have you tell us more about yourself and what you're currently working on okay so first of all i feel very glad to be here i feel very honored to work with you and then you as well it's an amazing, okay, it's an amazing thing to be on a platform like this where you discuss some very, very strategic issues that will impact on lives of people locally and globally. Because some of the issues you, you, you work on, people will think, okay, this is only for America or this is for London. No, this is something that you've been working on issues that concern us even locally. And for me, um, I have been an environmental enthusiast for as long as I can remember because the whole idea is if we have a cleaner, safer, healthier environment, we'll have cleaner, better, healthy people who will be productive and overall promote sustainable development in our area. So my vision has been a way to build the capacity of community people to be able to be part of their own development process, to see protection of their environment as a privilege, as an honor, and take it as seriously as it comes. And so for that, I have done quite a lot of things. Currently, we are recognizing that you must bridge the future with the past. You see, you must also bridge the past yes, with the future in the sense that understanding the intricacies around environment shouldn't just lie on the elders or lie on the uh, um, big or the old or whatever you call it. 
they should we need to recognize that the mistake we made by not taking environment seriously need not be made by our upcoming generation so because of that recognition of that fundamental need to promote information education and communication amongst young people we are currently working on a massive scale to promote environmental awareness advocacy and strategic information amongst young people and bringing them up to speed with being a part of their, their development process and understanding that they too can be part of the environmental solution. You see, that way we're building up an army of emerging leaders, emerging ambassadors for the environment. It's one of the strategic inform, um, activities we're carrying out now called Club 17 Africa in collaboration with the UN, the World Largest Lesson, and so many other partners. Good, that's fantastic. That's a whole lot that you, you're <laughs> doing. I, I, I particularly like um, the part that says that the mistakes we've made with regards to the environment in the past, perhaps the present day should not be repeated. No, no. otherwise, by the, by the, by the we are all going to generation. be even more vulnerable than we are right now. There's something you said at the start, today's topic post pandemic climate action. You know, people think um, climate change, as it were, is an American, is a foreign thing, is only in those worlds in Europe where these things are. But yeah. I mean, there's climate change in, in, in Nigeria. I mean, general climate change would be, um, I mean, Global warming, where we'll talk about the emission of greenhouse gases and then large scale um, rises in temperature. I mean, down here, we think most people just think of Northern Hemisphere <laughs> where the ice is melting, and then mm, how is it about concern down here? True. Okay, so hunger. our own problem is just hunger, but yes. you don't realize the yes. inter interconnectivity. Yes. You know, down here with effects of climate change. So you break it down. Yes. You break down what climate change is. Temperatures you break rising. Down to understand yeah? when a woman in the village suddenly sees the weather getting hotter, you tell her in English it's called that part of the effect of climate change. When you see the Bayasa House of Assembly staff quarters flooded, you tell her that is the effect of and some people say that the Orashi River over overflows its banks okay. every other Yes, they overflow. So okay, let's look at the one that, that also overflow their banks. And you look at, you see the typical thing that happened in 2012 and 2016 gives you a typical highlight as to even 2019 recently. Yes, and then of course, now, it seems 20. like it's not happening so, every year. So that means everywhere is experiencing a Russian river overflow. So because that is the only way I can put it. Otherwise, when you see those kind of things happening, when people put a face to issues, they now relate to, oh, is this the climate uh, thing we are talking? You understand? Because it had started off as an elitist statement. So the essence of promoting information, education, and communication is breaking down substantial, bigger English into live uh, um, um, statements that people can relate with. When you see certain things happening, the poor man knows that there's a language. The village man knows. The adult knows. The young ones know. So that is one of the ways in which we can bridge yeah, that we, gap. Which is, which is also super interesting because um, is the ability to be able to differentiate which one is caused by climate action and which one is caused by canals being blocked <laughs> because yes. of the overdevelopment happening in certain spaces they build on because there's no plan on oh, sorry development yes on unregulated development. De development so people have built on top of waterways they've done dredging and blocked a lot of the access points for the water to actually leave or move freely. So now, how do we effectively even communicate that to say, this one is global warming, this <laughs> one very good. is so caused by this see also. So you don't have a, an end to rainfall at some point. That is the direct effect. Now you see that you have flooding. Okay, you can have different excuses. Oh, flooding is caused because they block the waterways, they block the canals, they block the drain. Which, where in Nigeria, you don't have sustainable drainages anymore. If you look at Abuja that we thought we even had, people were almost trying to subsidize it. So yes, you have those ones that are block drainage cost flood and mm. all those related things. But you cannot still run away from the fact that there's something about the world. There's something about the environment <laughs> that is totally. different from how it was before. You know, and those things. You, you know, another interesting part to this is the timing the um the sequence before it it actually takes effect finally yes. so it doesn't just happen overnight mm. and that adjusting to the n new normal as it presents right. itself the incremental right. yes that gradual process does not even allow you to process that this is happening hamatan is no more like we remember it but nobody ever wants to or some of us can attribute it to 
global warming. Others just think that, well, it's one of those things. But I like to believe that the reason we don't see Amazon anymore as as good as, as, as good as, as, as intense. <laughs> yeah. What I see is to be because right. Amazon growing up was. <laughs> I mean, it was hand in hand with Christmas. Yes. It was reminded of Christmas around the corner. You're changing the world. There's no more white Christmas, black Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> so, note that as well. So, you start thinking through the process. Are you feeling me? Are you understand what I mean? I get it. We used to have white Christmas, you know, but now you know what comes with the white Christmas. Now, we have, when you have suit all over, you have everything that is almost bastardizing the beauty of Christmas. With that, you see, you don't have that beauty of the cleanse of the air and all those things. All these are part of what we're talking about the causes and then the attendant effect. It didn't happen overnight. How old, if yes. you look at how old you are now, from when you were born, most likely you were seeing the gas flare. And you were like, this is nice. So imagine, see the lights of what happened, and then lights, you know, like Nepal doesn't go here. This is really nice. You can use to cook. Like, like, multi-purpose lights, you see? Until you got to realize at some point in your life that that is not what the world needs. That that is the cause of the ailment you're worried about. That is the cause of the suit you're thinking. Illegal, this illegal, that all those are the things we're going to be looking at as well. So, 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 how vigilant do we actually have to be to be able to see these signs as they come? If we look at the case of suit, for instance, in Portal Couture, suit has been going on for more than three years now. It's well more than three years. More than three, three years. years. And it was this year, or early this year, or late last year, that people really, really started paying attention to what was happening. So uh, how about that three years ago, where would they, there, there was even a protest? The, the protest was when it was last year. Um, so that, I don't know, I didn't, probably last year or year before last, but because he, this year went by so fast. It was a breeze. <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> so it was not counting twenty twenty. So probably it was probably twenty eighteen. <laughs> okay, probably, so you see, it didn't happen overnight. It did not. You see, um, the outcry. The outcry, you know, like a typical tree, you see the, the roots and then you have the branches. The outcry was just a branch out of the real issue that had been going on for years. And the difference between this artificial issue that we can handle is the fact that it comes with human and a human decision. Do we have the political will to say no and it will go? Do we have the political will to say we don't need this anymore and it will go? So these are the issues. It requires political will to put an end to something everybody knows is the cause of your problem. If you know the cause of your problem is drinking, it just takes you to say, guy. Or change your brand. I'm advising you. I mean, caution, caution. You, you can go from <laughs> you can go from beer to to well to, 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 to no like a problem because it's, it's, it's there's one thing to know what is causing your problem it's another thing to say man this is my decision i'm moving away from this problem by all means possible i want to be a different person or where you are not directly responsible for that decision the political will of your mother to say guy whether you like it or not i love you you're my child that is why i need you to stop drinking and they'll either make you stop or make you not have access to buying or not have those are the decisions we need to take and at times like this those are the kind of political will we need to put an end to something everyone knows what is causing it but nobody seems to know how to go about nipping it on the board for a while there will be other things that may be causing it bottom line bottom is line. human it's factor human it's human factor. Human factor. Human factor behind it behind we have other issues but there's a human of, yes. and they are all interlinked to what we're, the topic of today is about you know they're all interlinked because these causes this climate, uh, um, this um, uh, continuous refining illegally, this continuous gas flaring, this continuous industrial activities. There are industrial activities that are not following best practice global standards, that are not following the best practice human food standards. These activities are contributing to the speedy and faster occurrence of this climate change. And you see that in, in con like even man made continuous um, uh, destruction of the forest, for example, is laying there our environment and exposing us not only to the greenhouse gases but also to a large extent bringing us closer to animals and when you get closer to animals you discover that you experience 
transmission, infectious diseases that are transmitted from animals to humans. COVID-19, for example, like I said, is an emerging inf infectious disease that is, you know, considered as one of those transmitted from animals to humans. And the continuous exposure to your safety, face, safety uh, net brings us closer to that uh, situation. And you see that we experience these kind of things across the world in different ways. Today's topic, post-pandemic climate action, post-pandemic, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. post-COVID. That term that I like, <laughs> <laughs> that I always ask, what exactly is post-COVID? Are we in post-COVID? Yeah. Mm. No, because when it started, it seemed like it was all a joke. Uh, everybody was was gearing up for the lockdown. So the, the threats, we said, uh, say it was in China. It's mm. not coming down here. We keep mm. forgetting how global um, okay. the world has just become. How, how, how much of a village? How connected we all are. How connected we are. Every day there's somebody from Nigeria going to China and the other way uh, around. Mm -hmm. And then, so if at the, at the, assuming it, the uh, patient zero came from China, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> so there's that whole, you know, consign me. But we're here and suddenly it started, the lockdown. Mm -hmm. There was the story before we get into the part of people not even believing at all. But people said, okay, if we're here, the government has locked us down for this reason. Post-COVID, we shall do this. After the pandemic, we will. So there's this post-COVID era that we're all waiting for. Like I, I, I would like to say, perhaps that post-pandemic era is, is now. Uh -huh. In certain places where in they certain don't places, have okay. Okay. Yes. No, they don't have so I mean, are we in what's what's this post-pandemic? We are just having fun, you know. Nigerians are just having fun, you know, because post-COVID started even when they announced there was COVID. So if you know, <laughs> <laughs> if you knew that your life depended on using your nose mask, why do people still not use? Why do people not, you know, take it as seriously as it should? You knew you were told. Critically, washing your hands can save you. People say, even if I want that, this hand, this water, I would rather use it to drink than use it to wash, wash my hand. It tells you something. There are underlying issues they think should be addressed. You understand? Mm. So I have one bucket of water only in my house. And then I would rather use that one bucket to be washing my hands when I can as well drink it or use it as good priorities. Thank so you, what do you think? You want me to stay and then I will be locked on lockdown? I'll be on lockdown when my daily existence depends on my daily activities. So, okay, for, even when we manage to all start wearing the nose mask, some wear it as mouth mask, some wear it as uh, eye mask, some wear it as <laughs> neck mask. <laughs> so, so you see that compliance was not necessarily because majority of Nigerians did not want to comply, but it was because majority of Nigerians, when I say majority, I'm talking about the vulnerable ones in our local communities who make up a lot of, uh, you know, the, the, the population, masses, yes. the, the real masses, they want to understand, you know, how did we get here? What is my, if I do all these things, what am I going to get out of it? Who has died? I don't know anybody that in my village you don't die of it. I'm sure you heard a lot of all those kind of yes. meats, meats and uh, all those kind of things. People need it. So to address COVID, post-COVID, climate action, climate change, you must address the intricacies behind mindset reorientation. People need to know that there are certain things you won't take. Don't don't worry. I know you've heard that it's like a political gimmick, it's used to make money, used, but there is nothing as good as staying safe. And keeping your family safe alive yes keeping your family alive so you can all discuss these intricacies and this political gimmick and all those things it doesn't have to hit you first before you know that covid is real at least as i when it was real but as it is now three months after we can see now the whole potter why are your nose mask that's what we in short <laughs> in short social distancing <laughs> at this table you said something earlier about how air pollution may um increase the risk of getting coronavirus since it, the, the story of it, it, it came from animals our that's reducing that gap between we and animals um how might climate change affect the transmission of the coronavirus uh climate change that is it now climate change what is climate change you're talking about continuous change in environmental uh, in, in continuous change in environmental condition due to greenhouse gases now this continuous change you know, in environmental condition, increases temperature, all those kind of things that go with it. You see that it promotes a lot of vulnerability amongst people. You see, so in such a circumstance, when people are already at risk, 
you see the the environmental pollution increases that risk that is why they talked about prevailing sicknesses that led to faster death of some people you understand when an environment is polluted it makes the habitats vulnerable it exposes the habitat. What is going on has to do with the respiratory tract. It has to do with infections of the lungs, as the case may be. It has to do with things from your nose. To, and that whole um, process, that whole system is compromised when you have poor environment, when you have pollution, when you have climate not aligned, when you have uh, the impact of climate change being felt and the effect of their uh, artisanal refinery, all these kind of things, they affect you and they make you more vulnerable to already an existing issue. So those are ways in which you can increase your your vulnerable status and also promote debt amongst people. Okay, so, you know, um, not I, that pollution in the environment is what causes corona. No. Yes. No. Okay. So, so um, the climate change with the the, the hand of climate change it increases uh, called pollution. Yes. 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 Because you know how climate change goes hand, yes, in, hand, hand in hand with um, increase in temperature. Of and then there was that myth mm. that in warmer climate Climbs. here. Yeah. Uh, and that the coronavirus would not start. They were using it to control everybody <laughs> in Africa. <laughs> I mean, yes, of course, the... the I mean, plus, the, plus... It has its own, um, you know, when you talk about warmer climate, it has its so own... Merit? Um, you know, merit, if I put it that way. But not necessarily that, okay, fine, you're from Africa, so the place is hot, it cannot affect... No, it doesn't work that way, you know, because... The, it, because it's... Um, that's why you see that when you... When you let me put it in... A very layman way. Okay, so when you sneeze, the effect, you see the thing, the heat, it dissolves, it destroys, you know, that kind of thing. All those factors come to play, and the transmission from one person to another becomes less of a challenge. Unlike in cooler places, you see it stays in the air longer. Let me use that word. I'm using those kind of, you know, layman's word to know that, okay, the longer time it stays, and all those kind of things. That is why the emphasis on social distances become very, very key, both for warmer climates and for um, cooler climates. But the advantage you have in the warmer climates is just what I just explained. So these are the things. Yeah. Okay, so speaking of um, the coronavirus as an infectious disease, mm. virus, well, it's a virus, nonetheless. Mm. Um, are they emerging, in, I mean, more emerging infectious diseases that we expect to see with climate changing um, negatively see zoonotics is bound zoonotics are you know e e emerging infectious diseases that co arise because from zoonotics, right? <laughs> 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 not a zoo, just a zoo. <laughs> okay now let's put that with zoo 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 notics like animals okay. You know? okay right fine. so the um see in uh, until man makes deliberate effort to protect the environment sustainably, to protect the environment responsibly, to protect the environment the way it should, we may be experiencing a lot more genetic, you know, than we are even experiencing now. Does 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 Lassa fever fall into that category? Also? No. <laughs> No, but it's an like, infectious disease. We have an yeah, emerging one. Now look at this issue about a uh, uh, you know you, you, people that eat wild animals. So far, man keeps eating wild animals. The vulnerability under that situation will increase. What if we cook it very well? Oh no, you cook it very well. That today you cook it very well. How you know the cooking very well is not relative. It's not defined. And do we cook Look anything very well? Account. Because when you is cook a medium it, rare. Well, ah, well done. Well, it's well done. Well, oh, medium rare. <laughs> you know the point is there are some practices that need to take the back seat for us to be able to enjoy a better future. And until we look into those practices, you understand, and then address those practices, it still will remain that we may come up to witness some more surprises when it comes to infectious disease. It's in our hands to decide on how we want to do it. So clean infected animals is not necessarily the solution, like they said that, and so let's go and kill all the infected animals in China. You, it's, it's, I mean, you have, to, you have to test all the animals to know that yes, these are, but relatively what we need to do is what are those ways we can protect our environment by reducing gas emissions, by reducing greenhouse gases. What are these gases? What is greenhouse gases? These are those are the things that make up the you know, those are the things that make up the greenhouse gases. You talk about carbon, you know, and all those things that go into nitrogen. And then you have to, to deal with the fact that these are consistently in the air. You understand? It's not that's the difference between something just happening now and something that has happened over time you see so now you see man's 
irresponsible behaviors towards the environment is just what is paying off now. If we decide to say, let's go green, let's pursue the green economy, let's pursue green jobs, let's pursue green living, let's pursue, we will be trying to make an effort at getting nature to appreciate us, at getting nature to have mercy on us, and getting nature to clean us, if you understand what I mean. But in so much as we have not agreed to get into that relationship with nature as a, as a policy, as a principle, then we will we'll have to be facing what we are facing now. Everybody has a role to play from an individual point of view to the, the, the corporate, the government, all agencies have a role to play to making our environment the better way than how we made it. And if we don't collectively decide to do that, if we don't promote best practices, we have gotten the sustainable development goals that have given us indicators and targets that promote best practices in environmental protection, climate action, and of course, removing every other thing, renewable energy uh, uh, promotion. If we don't even look at those expos that have been given to us, which are a development plan for us in the protection of the environment, we, have, we, can't say to have, we can't be said to have started. You see, because we have a global plan now to say if you want your environment to be safe so that you and the generations to become and, and you and the generations to come will remain safe, then there are certain things that we must do. Now they've given you the expo. There's some people that even if they give them expo in the exam, they'll still not pass. No, no, it's as serious as how yes. it is. They will I give you say this is the this is. because you don't still understand the fundamentals, the principles, you will not even know what it is that are given to you. So right now we have a development plan on how our environment can be better up than the way we are meeting it now. But the important thing is how much political will do we have to ensure that comes to pass? Whose responsibility is it's very good. It's the responsibility of each and every one of us. From the person who doesn't know that if you cut a tree you plant one to replace to the government who does who don't know that when you want compliance from corporate to ensuring gas flare stops and you don't do anything about the the, the fine you're, uh, you're giving to them, the fine, the, the, the punitive measures, so to speak, if I use the word punitive measures, or the, um, you know, the there's a better word for incentives, for incentives or, you know, that go with it. Now you see that you're not able to manage that process and then companies will easily tell you, it's better for me to pay fine than for me to stop this. Whereas stopping gas flaring, which is the role of companies, for example, is something that is feasible, is possible, is ongoing, is continuous, is a sustainable measure, are practices that promote resilience, that reduces vulnerability, that promotes adaptation, and all those things. If they do those things, you will discover that they will not only make their processes less uh, harmful to the world, but they will even make more in terms of advantage, in terms of profits and all that, but they are not yet ready to take advantage of that opportunity because of the selfish Next my, my so, day, yeah, might they not be ready to take advantage because I can imagine um, what this oil companies might be going through, burning those gases. Can these gases be used for something else? Ah, uh -uh, that is what we are saying. So it's not them. So them, they can it, I mean, can they just sit down and decide to? There are other things. Might they, might they, might they build a refinery by the side and use those gases? Twenty thousand, nineteen ninety nine. 1987 and going into the many years of advocacy year after year everyone in the oil and gas industries knows what natural liquefied natural gas is and where it is gotten from everybody knows that there is a possibility that technologies there are mechanisms that promote the conversion of gas play to useful gas Everybody knows that there's a better, more resilient, more uh, uh, greener, more uh, uh, responsible way of doing business. The important thing is who wants to take the lead on that. So she boils down to man's will to act. So like, it okay, let down us to the political will to act and the political will to ensure compliance. On, on the side of the government. On the side of the government. So everybody has a role to play. Protecting of the environment does not rest with you me or you alone. it is a collective thing you are moving on the road a policeman will stop a car that there are fumes give me the better word for the name of that team the fumes is fine smoke white smoke black black smoke <laughs> white smoke with dead pistons okay uh. <laughs> so that's smoke coming out now you see a, a, somebody will not allow that kind of person pass with an exchange of something and then you when you just manage with your okay, look, maybe just as one uh, extinguisher or something, not there, I'm just saying on oh, a scene, but you know, at that point, you now come up and they say, No, you must stop, you must stop back here, you must 
there's something missing. We need to get back to the fundamentals. We need to get that back to the foundations. We, are, we don't need too many experiences. It's not everybody that experience becomes the best teacher. Or it's not everybody that needs to have experience before they learn. You can also learn from what other people are doing. But it takes somebody with value. It takes somebody with commitment. It takes somebody with determination to look at the life of others and learn from the lessons from that person's life. You understand? And that is exactly what we're doing now. Some people want to experience everything. You know? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And whether okay. if you are like to it's give okay. the lesson or learn the if lesson, find out. But you have to learn from experience all the way. It comes at a price, too. It comes yeah. at a price. So, you so we need to go back to the if we all, if we all, If we all experience what being blind. So basically, it's suggesting suggesting to the, to the government to build uh, policies and regulations um, around sustainable goals. It's not to say uh, no, I don't say build because in Nigeria, I know we are experts at putting in place Pol policies, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. implementation sure. of those policies. Well, so I mean, the policies are already built around sustainable goals. We already have sustainable development goals as the development plan. At the Some kind of local laws. You as look local alike and domesticate this. We are very good at moving. We domesticate very fast hmm. because somebody has to work in London. So, so it's, in, it's enforcing it. No, domesticating is come back and say what they said we should do locally, bring it and domesticate it there. But then the next thing, I move from the table of the domesticated policies to being implemented. It's where there's a of plan. So that's an action plan. Action plan. So that is exactly where we have the issue. The issue is with the implementation of this plan. I you know that the COVID itself has affected the sustainable development goals in a lot of ways. But it has also opened our eyes, especially in the environmental sector, on better ways of protecting the environment with swift speed. You it's see okay, what happened in China? Okay, if it could happen in China and in India, I don't see why it would have to happen in Nigeria. The place became clean overnight. That is called drastic change. You, you see the difference? So why did it happen in some other places? Because they still did not comply with certain rules. This brings me to something I wanted to say. So when uh, we established that uh, climate change, mm -hmm. uh, Affects the increase and could, could. Uh, when there was only the peak of the lockdown globally, there was a point where everywhere was locked down the entire world. Yes, I think even there were certain places where climate change seemed to have reversed. What has become clear? Mm -hmm. They found fishes, the fences, the water just... Everything just appeared yeah, for the yeah, first time. Yeah, yeah. For the first time. Yeah. So <laughs> fantastic pictures were taken, we're seeing the recordings. They were recording. They almost wished that it could remain that yeah. this way. Yeah. So it seemed like a good a good thing to have come out of the pandemic. Yeah. Meanwhile, in certain other places, I mean, why why did that not happen? We were really yeah. spreading the photos from other places. So why, why didn't it happen here? Why did our water since we're all... Now indoors and nobody yeah, was polluting directly. Some, there, there, could, there could be some people who didn't have interest to do to they continue their outdoor activities. Uh, which is a which is a point. <laughs> Most of them did not have this indoors. <laughs> so they live outdoors. <laughs> they live outdoors. <laughs> they get all the activities. Uh, in the woods. <laughs> Does it make sense if you look at the deeper meaning of that? So you see that the activities that you thought were supposed to be put to an halt. In that environment where there's no night and day, they continue. You know, if we had more casualties, would that have been enough trigger for us? Already, the casualties you have, people say they don't know the people that have, the people that have, the people that have. So no, because we're very lucky that that, that, that they will have believed or not believed. Because the way you know, we the way the global say to five thousand deaths. Yeah. According to the CDC, you know, the thing is, we we can we have been a thousand deaths since now. Oh, okay. Okay. This, is, this, this is very good. Time. <laughs> Somebody said they did not. So it went from one one a thousand hundred and fifteen to a thousand one hundred and fourteen. And somebody mentioned, uh oh, did somebody rise from the dead? And nobody mentioned. <laughs> I told you from the beginning, we need to look at the mind. See, let let people get to understand that COVID or no, mm, there's something beautiful about staying safe. There's something beautiful about keeping your environment clean. There's something beautiful about washing your hands. I remember I was among I was 
the head of human resource and team building during the UI, I was directly involved in putting an end to what Ebola was. Mm. I got so used to washing my hand that if I could talk to anybody, I, I mean, before and after, I did what? Wash your hands. It was one of the things that they asked, is it, is it because of the Ebola, Ebola that happened in, in Africa? Is that why, I mean, did we, had we already started certain practices that may have kept us safe? That's why we were not so badly hit. It may, it may it not may, happen, but you, see, it may you can <clears throat> see that between the Ebola time and now, many people forget those practices. If they could forget to wear masks just within the past three months or two months or one week, people don't, I mean, you cannot use Ebola of maybe a few years back as a reason behind why some people, you know, yes, the consciousness, oh, I used to wash my hand, but, but don't mention the other things it, like it, drinking, drinking well, salt water. Well, well, maybe the Ebola too. Maybe the Ebola is too. You know, okay, sorry, things so, like that. I just wanted to make sure, I mean, we should, I kind of feel like the Ebola probably must have helped in terms of habits, washing of hands, and the type of things. Because I feel like once there's danger, it triggers, it just comes up. Because I know pre Ebola, yes, I wash my hands whenever it's convenient for me. But from Ebola to Corona, nah. Every every every, every chance after every handshake and stuff, if I forget and the next person sees it rude to fist bump. As soon as we're done, I swipe, I, okay, you know, so, for you who so, so, so for a couple of us, yeah, mm -hmm. I guess that, that, that consciousness remains. But how many of you are the couple of us? Yeah, but we so can start we, with that. So <laughs> we, we, have, we have certain organizations that, um, that would enforce these things, airports, yeah. schools, certain buildings you go into, even before there was the COVID. They just check the temperature. I know, they just employed somebody. The security, the other security man who didn't do a lot of work, he was before, armed with that thing. Before, just, before, yeah. But I will also notice that place, if you go to a place so and you don't see that, you're like, ah, what's going on there? Where's the guy that's supposed to do this for me? Before, so, 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 so there's airports, that. So we'll just, we'll just check in certain, certain African airports. Oh, oh yes. Certain African airports. Certain African I like airports. Airports. African airports. No, because even Port Harcourt International when, Airport. Before COVID, they were checking. Them. No, no, no. When, when there was Ebola, Internationally, they will check. They will oh, yes. always check. Oh yes, that's Ebola. Yes, we no, don't. before COVID, they just so I'm saying that practice has just been there. So even if personally, I'm not checking my temperature, I'm going to and get to, get to certain places, and then I'm complaining. Ebola is gone. Let me get past. They say no, sir. We have to check your temperature. The man puts that in. And yeah, but no, but, 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 but she's but dead. I don't even know. It's only when there's crisis like this that people begin to check temperature. That's it. Because internationally. Nobody's checking temperature. I except mean, internationally, you're all well traveled. I mean, even it, if internationally, they don't check yeah. temperature. That's so what you say internationally. I say certain Everybody. airports in airports, certain airports in Africa. Mm -hmm. They check temperature. Yes, that machine is there. They were not going to throw it away. Okay, so is there? Is there a pointing at you? Yes, just before you get is to the is it? I don't mention cities in Lagos, in Nairobi, yes, in Johannesburg, yes. You know, so I, think, I think I think yes. African airports have from have time. Have, just but, always so check. Everybody will check you in the UK. Mm. Mm. I think because of they're sending African countries down the lookout for yellow fever. No, so there's a yellow <laughs> card that's different <laughs> yes. from this temperature business. Yes. If you don't have the yellow card, they're giving you the job. Yes. yes. Mm. But, but they're also checking your temperature because they also the temperature uh, machine is there. It's, 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 checking, checking, you. it's checking you. Uh, you come aside if there, there, there needs to be a redefinition. There needs to be a redefinition of best practices in our country from individual to government to civil society to everybody needs to understand some basics and abide by those basics now for 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 one there is need for compliance we've talked about it from the corporate end from the government end there needs to be a revisit of our policies in terms of both implementation strategic planning reviewing and what do we call stimulus package we need to redefine what stimulus package is what are palliatives while it's so wonderful to give palliatives so you give a cup of rice you give a cup of this and you give them whether you see it or not you know but the point is we need to go deeper than that in, in, in addressing stimulus package and promoting environmental sustainability mm -hmm. and building up in terms of preparedness and readiness for a post pandemic or a, a second wave that may never come if we do the right thing. One thing is sure, we need to put certain things in place.
And one of those things is we need to look into the deeper way of promoting poverty eradication in more innovative ways. We need to review what we mean by the green economy. A lot of people that were let out of jobs, we need to revisit those things. We need to look at what are those things. The pandemic redefined the lives of a lot of people. You are here today because you already used technology. Enhancing technological use comes naturally to you. But a lot of people's lives were, de were defined by that a uh, new wave of True. technology utilization. True. You can imagine, I would never have imagined my six-year-old, seven-year-old is in class with tons of others. The writing test, the writing exam, they're doing this. It will never have perhaps happened if we did not experience this wave. You understand? You see community women, where they're building capacity for community business women to redefine their businesses, get their businesses online. These are measures post-pandemic that we can use to to reduce the the impact of you know the COVID nineteen in itself and the gap that it created, it opened our eyes to a lot of other things. We look at gender inequality issues. We look at poverty reduction. We need to look at ways to reduce hunger. We need to look at ways to address those deeper things that affect Africa. Those deeper things that affect Nigerians. Nigerians have issues that are priority to them. If the government at this point cannot ignore those things, if you ignore those things, it's at your it's at your own risk because you will be the one. Like I said, the hungry man becomes so hungry they eat up the next set of people that are <laughs> to be the policy makers. We need to look at post uh, as if at the pandemic and its impact on the world and of course narrowing it down to nigeria as a blessing in these guys on giving us a second chance to make our country better to make our nation better to make ourselves healthier you see people that have never taken to marry before got to know about to marry and they didn't know this what the old man in the village was taking after all sure. and now there's a diet yeah. the, the health we need to look at integrated socio-economic development we need to look at integrated health care process program we need to look at integrated poverty reduction strategies and redefine our social investment projects and redefine the way we do things otherwise we will come back to uh, uh, you know square one and you know where the bible talked about where one devil come off for body and you know can't take care of your house we're waiting for you you know 70 times 70. <laughs> 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 I, just, <laughs> I, I, just, I just stacking the numbers together yeah writing legend here yeah, I, I'd like yeah. to think that there's some kind of um i don't see pyramid but there's the underlying one that's always been there, poverty, which mm -hmm. has been a global issue. Mm -hmm. And then comes along climate change, that's just mm -hmm. been gradual, mm -hmm. and then eating away at whatever is eating away mm -hmm. at. And then coming down to this place, um, our locality, Nigeria, yes. in this state, we had, um, there's that poverty that's mm -hmm. just there. Mm -hmm. So that when you say to people, mm -hmm. how are you? Mm -hmm. They say, I'm fine, but my brother, I'm hunger. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's legit. Mm -hmm. I mean, how are you? It's supposed to be pleasant, but yeah. this, you just made your inquiry. Mm -hmm. Uh, a, a, a problem that you're not even about to start to mm -hmm. solve and then comes the protest mm -hmm. NSAS protest mm -hmm. which have one why i'm saying this is because you mentioned the palliative mm -hmm. and then because i would argued somewhere that the raid on these warehouses that held palliatives that were meant for covid and yes the coalition for covid thing that um the argument was you it would it's, it's direct relation to the protest and many have argued that it is not. That protest apparently were for a select few, were for people who were. I mean, the, the, the songwriter has said that the, the, the hungry man is an angry man, mm. or I mean, if you are, there's an, an angry mob. It's mm. a, a hungry mob is an angry mob. So they try to make this mob, this angry mob, uh, not hungry, mm. to make them less angry by providing mm. food. <laughs> so let's assume that they were not that angry. Uh, as or because they were no longer hungry, mm -hmm. and then, um, however, that very controversial end to the protest happened mm -hmm. soon after. There was this raid on the pilot. So I'm no saying it's this. not about that. Is not about the crime for bad for to be an end of bad governance mm -hmm. or end uh, police brutality anymore. Because the the government's reaction to that thing at the time it was happening was completely different. Mm -hmm. That issue quiet. was hunger, poverty. Perhaps people were saying uh, entitlement. I'm entitled to this. This was meant to be mine. And you kept We're hearing palliatives. And then we saw these pictures going around of these palliatives appearing in different places. I don't want us to change the topic. You know, but you mentioned um, the palliative. What's that nice term? Stimulus. Stimulus, stimulus packages. Yeah. The stimulus packages. So um, beyond. Um, short term. It's, yeah, the short term solution of it filling our pockets, mm -hmm. but our minds. Mm -hmm that poverty that we spoke about mm -hmm. to the, the solutions the, the that you gave mm -hmm. that you offered mm -hmm. 
trying to inform people mm -hmm. about these things. Yes. Yeah. I mean, would, would it also, um, flipping back to our topic, I don't want us to jump into palliatives mm -hmm. and the mm -hmm. political side mm -hmm. of what what it should have been mm -hmm. and how it was what it was supposed mm -hmm. to be and how, and how yes the information has come out that, <laughs> that thing is there in certain states they were situated between two military bases so nobody there <laughs> you know so i mean do you think it is important for health officials to be concerned about climate change or to speak about it it, it, it will be an understatement to say it's not important it's very critical it's, the, you know, it's something in the office you call important and urgent. Important but not mm. urgent. You understand what I mean? So now you have a strategic case of something that is important and urgent. What is COVID? It's a health crisis. COVID 19 is a. There's no other way to. If, I mean, how else can you define something that is so glaring? It's an emerging infectious disease group of companies. <laughs> <laughs> okay, do you understand? I just said how to talk about it. What are the public health people doing? They are not talking about this thing. I mean, yeah, climate change and global health policies have been treated as separate issues. They, should, they can never and shouldn't be treated separately. The only thing is, you just discover that climate change issues are discussed in the Ministry of Environment and health issues are discussed in the Ministry of Health to narrow down the impact of work that will be done in this area. Not necessarily to separate the fact that they are interlinked, they are interconnected. They, they, they call, go hand in hand. Oh, so when you have blocked drainage, and you have dominance of anopheles mosquitoes. What happens, please? It's malaria. Ah, you understand? For every environmental challenge and disaster, you pay the price with your health. Mm. True. Can we look at it? Yeah. Tell makes, me one. Makes, just makes, tell makes, me. Makes sense. For every environmental emergency, there is a direct impact on the health. When you have a, 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 a blood drainage. You don't clean that environment. You have this. What causes cholera? Cholera, something, something. And then you try something. Some, some, and then uh -huh. you take on. <laughs> in, in drinking water. <laughs> so basically, yeah. everybody has to be an advocate for. So everybody has a role to play in promoting internal to external uh, uh, best practice in health promotion. But the health practitioners, the Public health experts and all those people, like we're seeing, are the ones that need to take it as a front burner issue. They are the ones to create awareness. Mind you, they have, they, the local people also created their own facts about COVID. So somebody has to, somebody has to come and demystify the whole right. thing. There's a communication. If there's a huge get communication gap. COVID. I mean, Corona. I uh, don't know. Ebola will go. Then rub it on your, rub it on your body. And nicely, <laughs> rub salt every day before you go out. You bath salt every day before you go out. They have this feeling that when you just carry the temperature of machine, just touch your head, pop, 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 it will go. I mean, I'm just giving you if you eat a set, if you eat garlic and ginger, combine them very mm. well, COVID will go. Do you understand? It's more salt and light. It's a lot of, uh -huh. Now, all these are the redefinition of the solution as the local man understands. It takes the health practitioners, the experts in the field, the environmental advocates, the people who understand these things professionally to come and lay bare the facts. So people separate meat from fat and it increases the livability, the existence of human beings. We need to take those aspects very, very seriously. A great deal of this is, is based on misinf misinformation, poor communication mechanisms to be able to drive um, the to drive the message to the general public um so like you were you're talking about now the lessons learned from all of this mm -hmm. covid so originally when we we're talking about the light bearer we also talked about the shadows mm -hmm. yes and this is a situation where the shadow has its benefits <laughs> it depends it's very subjective it depends we'll, on how you look we'll, at we'll it some light on this <laughs> so the one who holds the light, mm -hmm. somehow, it will cast a long shadow. Mm -hmm. Shadows are mostly perceived as evil or bad. But shadows provide shade. Shadow is shade from a sun to a tree point of view. So this is a second chance for us to take a seat back and 
pretty much design a, or uh, design our own evolution moving forward from lessons learned from this COVID experience. Um, from dieting, um, communication, new and better ways of working at home, uh, new types of housing, um, city planning, because right now people are working from their homes and people are learning to be more effective in their homes. So that means uh, most of the houses we have out there, most of the office buildings we have out there can be repurposed for housing. I'm just saying, yeah. you know, so there are lots of things to be learned from. The lessons, yeah, lessons learned from this. Mm -hmm. So communication partner becomes how do we take this information now, break it down into components that are actually really meaningful mm -hmm. to people that they can actually get the gist of what you're saying. Because when Corona started at first, they said it was big man disease. Mm -hmm. It doesn't kill poor people. Some people said, oh, we've been taking a lot of malaria drugs over the years. So, oh. So these are things that are very delicate. But to the person that has done it and has worked for them, and not even having a lot of cases right now, it's almost like, but I told this one now. So people are already declaring the nation corona-free, even before the Minister of Health says we are corona-free. So you go to parties now, people don't have no masks. Yeah. They don't even wash their hands. They don't even do this. They don't even do that. And you on your own trying to, you know, obey certain rules. So the lessons learned are numerous. You know, we need to look at our food value chain. We need to look at our consumption. Sustainable Development Goals A talks about consumption, responsible consumption. Sustainable Development Goals Four talks about education. We need to educate people about this whole issue. Sustainable Development Goals Three talks about health. We need to look at quality health care as a right, well-being of our citizens. We need to redefine how these things we need to redefine how these things work. You understand? And how we can make our healthcare system more integrated and how you can make them work better. So sustainable development goes talk uh, talk about we have issues around poverty. No poverty, zero hunger, and all those things. You know, because if you look at the 17 development goals, they are interlinked now and all have been affected by this corona, uh, this COVID 19 issue. You know, so we look at issues like you look at 11 now, you, uh, go 11 talks about the cities. How do you link the pandemics with the cities? All covers climate action, all covers development planning. You understand? How do we redefine as a government? What can we do? As corporates, what can we do? As individuals, what can we do? Civil society, what can we do? Things have to change with this opportunity we have at doing things better. People that have lost their jobs. I'm talking about this issue about the green economy. Can Nigeria move towards a green economy? Can we have green housing? Can we have green healthcare system? Can we have you know green jobs? You see, so you lost your job because of this. How oh. can you mainstream better ways of doing that and um, that job renewable renewable energy we cannot run away from renewable energy because if once you can't talk about green housing without talking about renewable energy so you see the interlink and then what are we so greening greening worrying about we're greening up it's green expensive it's green expensive well so it, just like you can say it's knowledge expensive you know try ignorance i mean people have said climate change is uh, is expensive try to ignorance. fix a lot of a, a, a lot of economies depend on fossil to even drive productivity. Fossil, fossil fuel. Yes, fossil. Yeah. So if we if you now say no to this, you do not even have the infrastructure to even say you want to embark on green. So for instance, now Nigeria now with zero power, gas was flowing. I could have easily been used for power generation. Power generation. We have waters. We have the desert. We have everything. We do not have the infrastructure to make that switch because the power we even use is still fossil for generators. Okay, so, sadly, to go green, sadly, you need to know that we do look. Why, why, what is LNG? What's LNG? I'm sure maybe you've not yet understood my question uh, when I asked myself, What is LNG? <laughs> do you get my point? Where did it come from? Literally, let me put it that way. Who says we cannot convert gas flare to? useful uh, sources of energy if you understand what i mean we can we, it takes you to understand that the punitive measures the um fine uh, uh, there's a word i want to use that is better than just saying fine but you know the fine associated with flaring is not as terrible to companies eh, as any other thing that will have affected them directly so they say let us rather continue 
we we'll have been we'll postponing that option 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 but is it not possible it is it's not happening it is you want me to mention there are many countries where a, a conversion of gas flaring is taking place so why can't we do it in nigeria as one of because we know that gas flare is one of the dominant causes of climate change one of the dominant causes addressing that dominant causes will reduce the vulnerability level you know and also by the time we look at industrial aid issues you understand other issues human other human driven issues at least we'll have addressed the major one the bill the fight for gas flare uh, putting an end to gas flare didn't start today but the issue is that we are like a rocking chair please what happens to a rocking chair back and forth it keeps you busy but gets you nowhere <laughs> keeps you busy but gets you nowhere <laughs> corona is telling us we need to take a decision now do we want to continue until something affects the people that make the policies? They may not understand that the masses also have a voice. I'm, I'm not going to go into answers, but I can imagine the voice that it created in its own way. Yes. In its own way. Imagine if one say end climate change, end climate, end gas flare. You know, we have a hashtag end gas, gas flare. Yes. So the drivers matter. The drivers of these issues matter. Is it, yeah, the driver. But I mean, if you, if you look at Greta, uh -huh. how she's how she's able to influence that level of change. Do we need to have a greater type of character? We need I, to I have... Think it's, I think it's we, a listening ear. We need it's to a have listening ear. Yeah. Oh, you people are just too much. Amazing. That is it. You need to have a government that listens to take a young child seriously. Does that summarize it? Are you getting my point? The Greta yeah, had an opportunity to be listened to and her platform established. But even if the government is not listening to her the way she wants to, the numbers of people that believe also in what I was astonished when I went on her page. Yes. Um, last year, two years ago, we were organizing our TEDx event, and I think there was TEDx Exeter in the UK, and they shared the link with me. And behold, I saw this little lady, young lady, giving a talk about climate action and the seriousness with which she did a presentation. Like just calling everybody out and listen, enough is enough. And I'm like, you know what, let me dig a little further to find out what you want. And they do a march and you have over, what, 800,000, 500,000 march. People come people. out. People come out. That is, so you don't know that, so we, have possible. You don't know that we have Nigerian young children that can do more. Don't we? Or you don't think so? We do. But I also know it's beyond young children. It's that this, this, this cry has to be cried out very loudly. We have capable young people. We have capable teenagers. We have capable adults like you, who can change the the you know who can change the the story. You understand? But sometimes, if the society in which you find yourself either helps you to explore or shrinks you, and if you close the civic space that prevents you from expression, that is where the challenge comes. Mm. So I know that um, we can, I mean, these this problems don't, one problem doesn't have to stop for us to solve another one. They can be solved simultaneously mm -hmm. because it would be typical in our society for us to come out and cry about climate change. We need to end greenhouse gases and not emissions, stop uh, gas flaring. And the typical response you get from the masses is we're hungry. <laughs> we never talk of food, you are talking of climate change. Yes, but also saying that while we're tackling poverty, we can tackle climate change at the same time. And that is called integrated planning. In integrated planning, you look at food security, you look at poverty alleviation, you look at health protection and policies, you look at all those issues. Look at development from an integrated point of view. It helps you understand the interlink or the interconnectedness between one thing to the other. When you are giving out budget and designing your national budget, where you place your budget three, uh, where you place the most budget defines who the government is and what the term as priority. But if, if we look at it, if we go back to the communication part of it, if you cannot communicate effectively to the end user or to the masses, the effect of these problems and how it affects them directly, it will still sound like whitewashing like we're just using elitist yeah we're just talking elitist. until we're able to come here and say oh you see this bush that they're burning oh you see this gas yes this is um the very working on land land valuation this is this is how this pollution affects the aquatic life you will not be able to buy or, or fish ngolo periwinkle and fish 
You cannot live in a riverine area and you're going to buy fish, ice fish from township. Market, yes. Yeah. And bring back home. So until we're able to communicate that to them and let them understand how this really affects them and how their lives would deteriorate from here henceforth, it's just going to be... And also having them understand how to um, fa fa fashion their demands to the people who directly cause this pollution. So it's not quite coming to just give them money or no. build six classroom blocks for them. No, like a current project that we're running on, you know, where you have this water high center. You know the water high center that stops economic activities when it blocks the whole waterways. Yeah. You, know, you know that um, beautiful yeah, the, the flower, the sometimes things. some beautiful things look like, you know. So those things are really white flowers. Okay, so you know, it has a lot of it's, you know devastating effects on the waterways. Yes. And it causes a lot of harm. So we looked at it and said, what can we do to convert this thing into something useful that will also aid support for the communities? And then, so we harvest this water hyacinth and convert this water hyacinth to green biofuel. And these green biofuels are used by these communities to use for cooking and reducing their cutting of uh, uh, forest and um, deforestation and also it's promoting good. healthier use of energy. So that was one green strategy that is currently yeah. working and ongoing. You know, we just, it's interesting because remember when we're talking about uh, telling somebody to stop drinking. <laughs> when I say no, sometimes it's from the drink. <laughs> this is an example where if if this is bad, yes. we have identified this as bad, rather than totally eradicate it completely, what do we substitute for this? This is not as bad as this, but I think we can you can use this for now. So which is a classic example of the water accent and how that That's has been used as an alternative for Cutting down trees and using that for for firewood. So greener, also. greener future is part of something we need to encourage. So that means there will be a long list of green alternatives. There, should, there are green alternatives. Mm. There are green alternatives. So you don't need to eat fast food. I mean, you get very fast to your grip. I mean, you, you excess of everything, you know. But you take maybe more vegetables, you know, and all. I mean, you know, everything is going green. All the seventeen goals have their green alternatives. You get all the things you do there's at a whole, the green alternative. You start with the less expensive. And then you start with the less least expensive to now looking at the one you say this one is so expensive until you define ways in which you can make it less expensive. Sometimes that the policies around us that make them cheap or expensive. Don't people, you know, have oil cars or uh, cars run on solar right now. They do. But why are we not having so the, a lot of things, you know, depends yeah, policy on policy and work. redesign of systems because yes. um I remember a couple of years back, we were working on a project on um, zero tolerance to single-use plastics. Right. And one of the solutions we we're looking at was, paper. how do we, not even paper, come with your cup from your house. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you get a, a, a discount of your drink. So, in the abroad, let me use that. <laughs> <laughs> a good number of us walk around town with our bottles in our bag. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We go to a coffee shop, we feel, you know, so I'm like, okay. If that is possible, what creatures of habit? If you take your water dispenser back to a shop to swap it, bottle, yeah. So why can't you take your bottle of cream to a shop with a dispenser to refill back? Why yeah. can't you? So why can't we develop this type of so culture are, that says learning. no to single-use that is plastic. plastic. That is those are the kind of things going for what are the lessons. For example, you have a lot of businesses that were affected. What we are currently doing now is building capacity of existing business owners who must have lost one thing or the other in the course of the COVID. But we're not just building them in what they already know, which is their business per se, but we're building them on modifications on how to go forward. Now looking at branding, looking at online presence, looking at skills building, look at enterprise management, looking at online banking, all those kind of things that will enhance the existence of their businesses. And now businesses are getting better off than where they were when the COVID affected them. So there are lots of things we, we that can happen as a way forward to preventing this so-called second wave that is going in the air and also preventing future pandemics. From the climate change point of view, you have to start from the environmental protection in a sustainable manner. We need to, you know, they say drink responsibly, right? Protect the environment yeah, responsibly. Okay. Take a decision to be a part of the change. You understand? Not the problem. Uh, not the problem. Take a decision to ask yourself, am I really concerned about the masses? Take a decision. Look at women, business women, and look at mothers and all those people. We can't say women were more affected or impacted by the pandemic, but yes, women were 
vulnerable to these pandemics in a lot more ways. What can we do to promote gender mainstreaming of all this information so that even the people in the communities can actively be a part of their development processes? That way, people will be busy protecting their environment and less interested in whatever is going on at the national level because you have engaged them constructively, you have kept them busy, and you have provided for their interests. There's proper health care, there is a system that works. People want now if somebody will tell you, I can't go to primary health care because I'm get scared of dying. I hope you know you people say those kind of things. It's mm. weird, but you don't know that people prefer going to try the medical centers to check their beds uh, and what do you call them? Medic uh, beds, traditional beds attendants. Eh? Okay. Yes, traditional now, midwife. People prefer to go have a massage by traditional beds at okay, you don't worry now. You still have twins. So you know <laughs> 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 to go to a care center to go and because of the fear of a lot of mindset. Our mindsets have been so busted because of the situation we find ourselves. But it's not like traditional mm -hmm. medicine is bad. No, I mean, no, like that's, medicine, that's a different uh, thing. No, that's a different thing. Yes. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> <Okay. laughs> but we're saying in the presence of perhaps um, better. Uh, yes. yes. Pe perhaps better. It's better, not some, subjective. Some, now. It's subjective, but some of these things are not are actually not. Do you mean one plus one is equals to two? Uh, two is one and one. Uh, no. <laughs> yes. <laughs> In certain cases, <laughs> you know, I mean, winding down, we're almost at the top yeah. of. I mean, at, at the end of today's event, Dr. Mina Obanga, twenty years of um, promoting yeah. community and environmental <laughs> rights. It must have been a whole lot of work. Boom, boom. Across 800 communities. Yes. In yes. That's globally, yes? We can we Worldwide. Can, we, if we want to include worldwide, I'm talking in terms of countries. Yeah, okay, fine. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. That's the, there must have been yes. major hurdles that you have had to cross. Yes. I, I could ask you to mention a few, but mm -hmm. um, just so mm -hmm. we can... And it's clear with an environmental project, fortunately. Oh, okay. In 1999. That was mm. our first project in a Kerikana community in Okrika. We were called by the women there and saying, Why are these white things falling down? Why are we having respiratory diseases? Nineteen. Oh, white in stuff. Women. I thought I was going to say snow. I was going to ask. Like, in, we 20, were in, in, 20, <laughs> in 20 years, what has been your, your biggest challenge so far? And um, secondly, your biggest achievement, if you can tell me that in a minute. Okay, our biggest achievement in is in getting the global recognition of your efforts when the eu gives you an international award when the investors the people you can give you when the, your local communities see you as valued fine that is something that you cannot quantify <laughs> that you value people irrespective of the little you're doing people are watching and saying wow from all over the world it tells a lot it's very humbling it's very very humbling you may not have so much to give but the little you have that you give people see the impact see their lives the changing hearts. and people see their lives changing and you leave a community better off than how you met it there, there is nothing as good as that happening and imagine if you're entrusted with even more you know to whom much is given like you said much it's is what expected. expected and so yes we have to deal with the issues about conflict in communities and and policies that we have to deal with but at the end of the day you go to some places now to say yes you were the one that changed my life we give lots of people who worked to advocate for people to receive scholarships today you see them and you say yes i was a beneficiary of that scholarship people have gone home and abroad and they've been able to see their lives better people in villages that would never had access to water have access to it 20 years ago we started that and they are able to people understand development planning we have been able to design community development plans for 800 communities so if you're a donor a government and oil company you just go to those communities show them this is our own plan if you want to help us feed into this plan there's nothing as good as being the change that people wanted to see so in our little corners when people will come around and say you changed my life i think you'll be searching and say well that that makes the world really wonderful yeah. yeah would you tell us your biggest challenge as well yes the biggest challenge like i said you know is when you have to deal with the 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 environmental issues they face when i mean environmental sometimes it will be conflict i remember during our the um fight that um what they call this um um war that we had that time in the niger delta what did we creek voice when they were oh, when was the, military, okay. the militancy, of militancy yes. we were working at the peak of the militancy and we know that we lost people at that time because of the state of the events we want to work in the community like at jalomonia now we're building a bridge in jalomonia so we're building a bridge in jalomonia people had to take um and um, boats to carry the the raw materi materials materials 
to the location so that they can bring. And in the midst of trying to do that, they were attacked by militants. Wow. And uh, you know, I don't know, it took a lot that today we are celebrating some who came out alive. And those are some, you know, some moments that are high points for you to say, wow, you know, in spite of these things, you know, development still took place. And the success story of being a part of the conversation that led to the current peace we're experiencing makes the world, you know, a wonderful place. You you look at yourself and you say you don't need the world to tell you you've done your bits. I mean, in just 20 years, if you have done it, definitely the next 20 years are going to be even better because you're going to be more purposeful. You're going to be more strategic, and you're going to be open to the opportunities that will arise in making the communities a better place. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Mina Obanga. On today's session, um, post pandemic climate action, we talked about having um, a listening ear. Everyone from the government, we know they are the, they are the ones who are responsible for making the environment um, conducive for all these things to thrive. Um, we talked about not just health officials speaking about climate change, but everyone Everybody. understanding, everyone who has the information about it, sharing this information, letting people know. Um, then we also talked about implementing policies, government implementing policies around sustainable goals. We know these things, they go for these conferences every now and then. Implementing laws around sustainable goals, so the road safety officer stopping on the road understands that it's not just because he's written on his book that if your car is smoking, um, this is the fine. You it's understand smoking. that the car is smoking, these mm -hmm. are the causes, these are the yes, and, and effects. And they usually have no smoking at the back. That would be a different kind of okay. <laughs> uh, So, thank and, you. Uh, um, also, a, okay. a bottom-up communication um, design or, or implementation plan. Yes. Communication yes. plan. Communication plan. Yeah. So, I, I think that would be that's, that. That should also be added. But uh, before we close this, uh, just to remind people, do follow us on all our social media handles: uh, TEDx, PHCT on Instagram, Facebook and twitter for all the updates and also register uh our million uh, uh um <laughs> based on a newsletter platform so that as we have the information you'll be the first to know stay safe stay safe are you going to interrupt me again no I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> okay so donald okudu dr bina yeah, Obanga. i remain adela Urike. thank you bye and peace out, out.